Hi, this is Sweet Life and I'm Natasha with a recipe for making a sweet and spicy holiday ham. In my family, a holiday ham is one of the go-to meats for the main meats for Christmas and Easter. It's relatively inexpensive and allows you to feed a sizable amount of people without a lot of work and effort. The flavors of brown sugar and maple syrup are often paired with ham, but I also like to add a little bit of spicy to the sweetness. So for this recipe, I add just a little bit of spice and acid as well, which creates a complex flavor that goes really well with the ham. This is a relatively easy recipe that you can pull off and have as a really nice centerpiece for your holiday table. Pair the ham with a few sides and you'll have a holiday meal that looks impressive without being stressful to prepare. I'm going to start by taking the ham out of its packaging and placing it into a large stock pot which I then fill with water. The reason being that the ham can be very salty straight out of the package. Never mind that they tell you they're cooked and whatnot, I think they can still use some cooking. They tend to be salty, they tend to be a little bit tough, and they need like a little bit of extra TLC, especially because you need to draw some of the salt out of the meat. So here I have it in the pot, which I've just added enough water to cover the ham, and I'm going to let it boil for a while. It's going to help to make the ham tender and get rid of some of that saltiness. Generally about, let's say 45 minutes or so is enough time, give or take a little bit of time. Just check it as you're going. I wash meat with vinegar and I especially do not like the smell of pork when it's cooking. So in this case, I'm gonna add just a few tablespoons of regular old white vinegar to the pot. When you buy these hams, a lot of times they come with a sauce packet. It would be like some kind of glaze or something along those lines. I don't particularly care for them, but if you prefer to, you can turn use it but I'm gonna make my own. The glaze that I make is very simple, comes together quite easily and I put this together while the ham is boiling. I am using an alternative brown sugar sweetener to cut down on carbs and sugar but you can go ahead and use just regular brown sugar that's perfectly fine. To that I add roughly an equal part of maple syrup. This isn't gonna be overly sweet. Bit of apple cider vinegar, spicy brown mustard, salt, just a little bit, and some garlic chili sauce. This is completely optional, and the amount you use is completely up to you as it controls the level of spice. Stir to combine everything together, and this will now take and put onto the fire, just to heat it up, get all of those flavors nicely combined. So now then, I'm getting ready to bake the ham. And so I have the glaze, which um, is just going to be poured over it. And then I have the ham here, which I previously boiled, and it's cooled down a bit. So I have the glaze here, but I actually went ahead and added um, just two tablespoons of uh, butter, which I allowed to melt into this. And now I'm just going to stir it together. And I'm just going to take the spoon, because I want to kind of control where it goes, and just pour it over. I'm actually just going to baste it as it cooks, like every so often. But for right now, I'm gonna try to distribute it as best as I can, getting it in between the slices. You can see I have my ham all glazed up and everything, and I don't want the bottom of this to burn, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of water at the bottom of this. And this, I'm just pouring into the bottom of the pan. And I'm going to add orange juice to the bottom of the pan as well. Or the dish, I should say. And honestly, all I'm doing is just kind of swishing it around, which is just to mix the water and the juice. And also, like, some of the glaze that I poured over, that's already dripped down to the bottom. And so it's just going to help mix it together. I really want to avoid having, having this burn. This is now going to go into the oven to bake at 375 degrees. And so because of the sugar content, I'm not going to put it high up in the oven. I'm going to actually put it down towards the bottom. The reason being, I want this to take time to cook and absorb some of the flavors, but avoid having, or for as long as possible, avoid having the glaze um, brown too quickly and burn. So um, this is going to go, like I said, into the bottom section of the oven, like the second rack from the bottom, and I'm going to let that bake. Other things that I need to cook at the time, I'm going to put towards the top, but into the oven this goes. 
So actually, um, when I poured over the glaze, it was easy on this side here, which is a bit more open to pour the glaze and get it between the slices. So you see how this is like more open, whereas on this side here, they kind of, they tilt back a bit and close in on each other. So just from the drippings that we've already got in here, I'm going to just open up those slices and just pour some of this in between so that you don't end up with like one part of the hand being really nice and flavorful and then the other hand like being relatively under flavored. I'm going to pour it on the front too. I'm going to just give the back a bit of check. I'm actually going to put just a little bit there as well. Let me see the oven this goes. I've taken the hem out of the oven, allowed it to cool for a bit. It's actually cooked down and gotten so tender that one side has come loose from the bone. You can take the ham and just put it like this onto a serving platter with maybe a little bit of garnish around. To make things easier, I bought a spiral ham. If you have an unsliced ham, that's fine, but you might want to slice a little bit of it off in advance just because when you're sitting down to dinner or your meal or whatever it is, it can be a bit of a hassle trying to slice it at that point in time. And then you have people who go to serve themselves and if you don't slice enough then you know they're trying to slice it just turns into a thing so just make it easier slice some in advance if you have a whole ham in this case because this is a spiral ham I got it in part because you can take the flavoring and really get it in between the slices but then also it makes it a little bit easier to serve when you put it on the platter right you have it on the table you can just easily cut it off the bone at that point in time but the way how the ham is set up is that about half of it is sliced into spirals and then the other half of it is left whole right the slice part is going to be easy to cut off the bone you can serve it like that make a nice presentation but if you're more concerned with making it easier for people to serve themselves um, you can go ahead and cut those slices off of the bone and just put it on the platter so the sweet and spicy ham you can have by itself um, some people do biscuits and breakfast items if the ham is more for a holiday breakfast or brunch we do ham for lunch or dinner so i'll be serving this with green beans almondine and corn pudding if you're also doing a lunch or dinner you might want to go ahead and do not too much but maybe like two three sides or something like that you can serve it with biscuits or maybe rolls and you have a really nice complete meal this ham is actually a really nice option for holiday meals because you can start prepping in advance. It can be one of the first things you make on the day of when you start to prepare your meal, right? Just leave it then at room temperature once it's done. What you can actually do is to boil it in advance, set up the glaze, all that kind of stuff, put it into the pan, and then on the morning of, it's just a matter of sliding it into the oven. You'll be good to go. It just makes this a lot more easy. I would actually suggest doing all of the prep work in advance, and then on the morning, of you just push it into the oven and if you're doing like some other meats or something like that you can go ahead and put those other things into it into the oven at the same time if it'll fit that way you get like your big items out of the way the things that are going to take longer to cook out of the way that leaves you a time to take care of if you're doing like appetizers your other sides and things like that so you don't feel like this mad rush because your big items are out of the way early in the day when the meal is over, you can put the leftovers in the fridge and take out individual servings, allowing the slices to come to room temperature or warming them up in the microwave. Microwave is fine. I don't think it really affects the flavor, but to avoid having the meat dry out, maybe take a piece of paper towel and just wet it a little. Not like soaking wet, but just damp. Put it over the ham, put it into the microwave so that it kind of lightly steams versus just going into the microwave and drying out. Thanks for tuning in. To ensure you don't miss any episodes, subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. Go ahead and click that thumbs up button if you like what you saw and go ahead and share it on social media.